Hello and welcome to Don Mecca's channel, which is me. I'm Don Mecca. <laughs> In today's video, we're going to check out another science video. It's quasi science since we haven't discovered any aliens in actuality out there in the universe yet. But the odds are immense, like they're out of this world, literally, that there should be some kind of life form somewhere out here in the galaxy or in the universe. The odds are just staggering that should have happened somewhere else also, right? Unless you're in the camp of the creation and Earth being a special creation of God and um, you're in that camp of the religious viewpoint of things. But even if you are, I think you'd be hard pressed to not consider the fact that there's trillions on trillions of stars in the universe. And this formation of a star and planets revolving around them is very common. What's not common is the right conditions, being the right distance from your star, not being super active and a host of other criteria like the materials of your planet, so on and so forth. So there's a bunch of conditions for life to develop and we're only considering carbon life currently because that's all we know, but there could be other type of maybe silicone based life and so forth that we have no idea of how to even begin to understand and see or detect that. But anyways, let's get into this video from our favorite science channel. I can't pronounce their names. I'm sorry. In a nutshell, let's get into it. The video is how to win an interstellar war with aliens if they're out there. From light years away, another day at the Kurtz Gesagt Labs, where we answer the most important questions with science. Today, how might civilizations wage war across light years? What kind of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? Meet our two players, a yellow dwarf star system home to a species of primates. Funny how they made this into a video game type scenario. Humans, as they call themselves, recently became a technological civilization. They have rockets, nuclear reactors, and memes. How cute. Yeah, we're gonna fight wars with memes. <laughs> The Scorpions disagree. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years. Notice another dwarf star that they referenced, because I guess those are the best type of stars <laughs> to be around. They give you the best odds of survival, not being sterilized whenever there's a violent solar wind or solar storm or whatnot. And some of these other classes of stars are not very stable is away. The Smorpion civilization developed earlier than humans and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson Swarm around their star which gives them near limitless energy. This, if we ever do this, create a Dyson Swarm around a star to harness the power? Jeez, that's next level of energy. Limitless energy like you said. And they noticed humanity, which is unfortunate as the Smorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. So they decided that humanity has to go. Interstellar war is hard though. Front lines <laughs> Interstellar bypass through Earth. Earth is not even stationary. It's revolving around the sun, so. Ticks and logistics are meaningless at these scales. It's also fought across time. Decades will pass between firing a weapon and learning whether it hit or not. How angry do you have to be to start a war with another species or whole planet that will take decades, 500 years, a thousand years for your weapon, your quote unquote bullet to reach the other place. That is insane. Sending an invasion fleet is futile. Even if the Scorpions travel at a large fraction of the speed of light, the journey to Earth would take decades or even centuries and humans would have plenty of time to prepare. If you want to learn more about the mind-numbing problem of war between alien civilizations, we made a video about it. Today, we'll help the Scorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long-range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth. So, so you're going to go give them the game plan to destroy Earth? You traitor. You human traitor. No human survivors will come to enact vengeance on Smorp in the future. In interstellar war, you want to win with one shot. Our bird scientists have found three Scorpion designs, the Star Laser, 
the relativistic missile, and the ultra relativistic electron beam. All based on. Now, are these real technologies that have been developed here? <laughs> or we know that is actually scientifically possible? I see. On real technologies that humans are using in some form already. Okay. Let's see how they work. The Star Laser. As an advanced technological civilization, the Scorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites. This Dyson Swarm collects 1% of the star's energy output, a million, billion, billion watts. And that's all. God damn. 50 billion times more than all humanity generates. And that's 50 billion more than all of humanity. What if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Human-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. The Smorpions could turn their entire Dyson Swarm into a collective focusing element a million kilometers wide. Jeez. The star laser has an insane range as a result, enough to focus on target Earth from a distance of over two million light years. Okay. Wait, he said two million, but it showed. Focus on target. Okay, now that he's showing the, the distance of the whole galaxy. Earth okay. from a distance of over two million light years. Okay, let's shoot it. Count this tiny. B Imagine a light, a laser beam, this destructive traveling for two million light years. Beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams are normally invisible in space, but the star laser is so powerful that light scattering off bits of dust and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. A gigantic column of green light. The laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. It takes a whole day until the laser has left the Scorpion system, shooting into Damn. the emptiness between stars. It will travel for death. <laughs> Do you guys see system, this? Shooting into the emptiness between... Ooh. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Chilling on the moon rock. Stars. It will travel for decades, occasionally melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. 42 years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky, and then they're gone. 42 years. Okay, now that's a faster weapon. 1% of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth, traveling 42 light years. It burns the exposed half of the planet with the intensity of three million suns. The Jeez. It burns with the intensity of three million suns. That's a rat. That's a crazy suntan. These boil and evaporate, fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. As the planet Sheesh. rotates, it turns into a red hot hell with no trace of life. After a day, it's all over, and the laser dies down. In another 42 years, the Smorpions will know if they've been successful. That's another thing about interstellar war. When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from World War II exploding in the 80s and us only seeing the effect today. God. <laughs> okay, the star laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But is there something else? Can they do it better? What do you guys think? Write in the comments. Is there even a better method before they get into the other two methods? The relativistic missile. What if instead of converting the energy of their Dyson Swarm into a laser, the Scorpions used it to shoot a super bullet? A relativistic missile going as close to the speed of light as possible. This sort of weapon is at the limits of what the Scorpions technology can handle as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter the evil twin of regular matter. Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. That's crazy to think about that humans have created antimatter in a lab. Very small quantities, but still being able to create that and verifying the existence without a doubt is insane to me. With their unlimited energy, Smorpion... Basically, with matter and antimatter coming together, explosions. They destroy each other instantly. ...can manufacture it at an industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which in more practical terms means there's a big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. 
The physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic field, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. But okay. it would be much faster. The fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle, 100 meters wide. On top of it are 250 floors filled with antimatter and matter. You said 250 floors? Well, then I gotta go back, what? Wide. On top of it are 250 floors filled... 250 floors full of fuel tanks. Filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. On the top floor is a 300 kilogram projectile just to deliver 300 kilogram projectile looking quite small about the size of a person to stop them getting damaged on the way the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a whipple shield to make sure they do their job the scorpions build 1000 missiles <laughs> yeah that's going od <laughs> 1000 let's fire them launching all the relativistic missiles is a spectacular event for a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Their exhaust is a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. With the extreme amount of energy released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9... I wonder why would they appear redder and redder as they accelerate from the viewpoint of the alien planet. If anybody knows, would love to know. 9999996% of the speed of light. They have effectively infinite range as there's nothing really to slow them down. They arrive shortly after you can see them. The light from their long. Whoa, 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 hold up. You're going at of the, spe the speed of light. That's incredible. Speed of light. They have effectively. It's technically almost going at the speed of light. As you go faster and faster, time slows down. And if you actually reach the speed of light, time stops for you. What would it be like experiencing 99.999996% of the speed of light? If I, I don't think a, anything living would survive on that rocket, but if there was a way to protect you through that journey, you could technically, that time period of travel could be very short as to you relative to the rest of the universe because time is slower for you while you're traveling at that speed. Infinite range, as there's nothing really to slow them down. They arrive shortly after you can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So, so 42 years also. Maybe that 42 years will feel like a year. Human astronomers might see the flash of the missile's launch, and then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy of a dinosaur killer asteroid. So only Jeez. one needs to hit. They never... And they launched a thousand of these? Oh my God. ...reach the ground, disintegrating instead at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense blue flashes set everything on fire. Then continent-sized fireballs slam down on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly, wow. until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. So interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. Ruthless. But they are a hassle Savagery. to build. Is there something else, maybe? The old Imagine you're an alien civilization and you somehow start getting signals from Earth and you're watching this mm -hmm. and you figure out translations and everything. What would you be thinking about humanity that they're imagining things like this? Ultra relativistic electron beam. Humans do funny things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at strawberries. Small particle accelerators send electrons into the food with an energy similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. Smorpions had the same idea, but bigger. The main challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. Mm. A regular electron beam will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons by building an ultra-relativistic electron beam, or UREB. What it does is accelerate the electrons to 
9999999999999998% of the speed of light. How did they calculate this? <laughs> That's a whole lot of nines. Okay. How they figure that out? Point zero 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 two percent is missing. How do you figure that? Light faster than even the most powerful cosmic rays. The closer something travels to the speed of light, the slower time moves for it relative to the rest of the universe. Aha, like I was saying earlier. And since these electrons are moving so incredibly fast, for every second of spreading they experience, over five million years pass in real time. Every second of their experience five million years past what the so 42 years is way a fraction of a fraction of a second a physics trick that lets the beam cross interstellar distances while remaining tightly focused on its target the biggest particle accelerator on earth is 27 kilometers long the scorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long a mega structure eight times longer than earth is wide Ooh. It's mostly a tube How? of magnets holding the beam together until the exit. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. When it's fired, it produces a ruler straight lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. No flashes of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. It doesn't destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People get dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. You might think that a deep bunker could save a few humans. Damn. But no. The Europe is so penetrating that its effects accumulate to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. In the end, Damn. just like our strawberries, Earth becomes sterile. See now, that's something that option they might take if they want to take over the Earth, right? You get to sterilize everything and not really damage as much. Okay trees plants and stuff like that all life is gone right and you have complete dominion over the planet that's still intact not a blazing fire and lava hmm. the mutation results hmm another elaborate animated science explainer by Kotzkazad where we've learned a lot not sure exactly what luckily <laughs> yeah what did we learn there's a lot of ways for earth to end the scorpions don't really exist but other thank goodness that they don't exist might one major downside of all our weapons is that others around the milky way could see you firing them which is not ideal because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are so maybe instead mm -hmm. of shouting or shooting out into the universe the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe Maybe one day we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. Woo. But we don't have to stay out of it. Okay, that was a very interesting video. Three scenarios. Which one do you guys think is the most likely to happen at any time in the future? Who knows? Why would someone do that? Why would another life form on a distant planet want to destroy one that's billions or hundreds of millions of light years away when there is no contact no threat at that time it makes no sense but doesn't mean that they wouldn't want to uh come and grab the resources such as the planet for it being in such a stable solar system if they're able to build such weapons i think they could go and find uh, a dwarf star and put things put materials in orbit at the right distance for their their comfort levels so the whole concept of just trying to invade because they want to steal the resources on earth or the setup of earth is too perfect if they have the abilities to do those other things we just saw they could build their own world really at the end of the day so destroying one just to take it doesn't make sense especially when it's so far away anyways i hope you enjoyed this tag along on this reaction video make sure to like comment subscribe and leave let me know what you think i want to hear your thoughts